worship the Lord, celebrate Him, receive from Him today. Amen. Praise God. Girls, are you ready this morning? Are you ready to sing? All right. Praise God. That's wonderful. It's going to be a great help for us. All right. We're going to go to the scripture this morning and a word for you. I'm reading from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord in all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. My Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day you've given us Lord, to worship you. We thank you, Lord, for the people that have gathered so far, Lord, and the people that will be gathering. We thank you, God, for the many outpourings of your Holy Spirit, Lord, throughout our nation these days. We pray that God just keep your hand upon each and every one, Lord. As we enter into your service this morning, Lord, we pray that God will anoint each and everything that's done. Anoint the prayers, Lord. Anoint the word, Lord. Anoint us as we bring forth our, our instruments and our voices, Lord, and we praise unto you, Lord. Father, touch our congregation, Lord, as they worship with us, Lord. Touch our hearts and our lives. Let us be changed by the time we leave in here, by the time we leave here today. We ask you all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Let's worship the Lord together.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
So we need to really pray for these young kids who are going to get married. You know? <laughs> man, they have no idea, what con you know, no concept of what life's like, right? So you know what I'm, I'm going to pray for both of those couples who are starting out in life together at least. So we pray about that. For some reason, they asked me to be officiating at both of those, so which the reason, of course, I'm the pastor. So pray for me, right? And I don't love it. Okay, yeah. That's the worst possible thing to mess up at a wedding or a funeral. You know, on just going high, don't ever come back. So uh, pray for me. <laughs> Turn your Bibles with me, if you will, please, to the book of Numbers, chapter 13. Beginning in verse 25. Numbers chapter 13, we're going to begin verse 25. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. And they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone to spies is the land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. Heavenly Father, we just come before your throne of grace today in the awesome name of Jesus Christ, and we're asking, Lord, that you would speak to us once again today through your word. Your word is alive, and your word gives revelation and understanding. We pray, Lord, that through your Holy Spirit, our ears might be open to hear and our hearts open to receive the word of the Lord. May we be united, Lord. May we be together in mind and heart and spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. We give you the thanks for it. Amen. 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 Give a shout out to someone you haven't so far. Amen. All right. 
The message title this morning, There We Saw Giants. It's, it's amazing, truly amazing, how different people will view the same incident or occurrence from a different perspective and see a totally different story. It's amazing. Even when it comes to witnesses or something, a robbery or murder or whatever, people have different perceptions on that. How we see things often is a result of our personal experiences combined with our understanding of the situation plus our attitude. And we can see the same thing in a totally different way. Whereas in one circumstance, someone might see defeat. Another person will see an opportunity. Right? A challenge. And it all depends on our perception and how we view it. In the story today, that's a classic example of that. We find in the story, and you're familiar with it, God has led his people out of Egyptian bondage. The great and mighty awesome God delivered them from the hand of the Egyptians, who were the most powerful nation at that time. Persuaded Pharaoh to release them. Even though they were of great value to the Egyptians and their the fact that they built the roads and things like that, cheap labor, right? And then you know, there were over two million people approximately in, in the nation of Israel at this time. They weren't a nation, of course, even they were in Egyptian bondage. But God delivered them. Amen. Moses led them out. Into the wilderness. And his goal, his purpose, his blessing to his people was that he was going to lead them to the promised land. To a place he had, a, had determined that they would inherit from him. There were other people there at that time. I know that. There were all these heathen nations. But God and his desire to bless them because God's in control of everything, right? Had determined this is going to be the land I'm going to give my people. And these other people, they have to go. And so he leads them out with that purpose With that blessing in mind, he leads them into the wilderness, and then they encounter the Red Sea. The first really big obstacle, right? And then to make it worse, the Egyptians change their mind, Pharaoh does, and, and the armies of, of Egypt are behind them, and the Red Sea is before them, and I'm looking for that whole story. But you know how it was? God performed a miracle and opened up the waters of the Red Sea during the night so that his people could walk across on dry land. Amen. When the Egyptians decided to follow them, big mistake. Can you agree with me? Can you see that? Big Amen. mistake. Amen. But they decided to follow after God released the waters that he had 
driven back by the wind, released the water, and the water came up back again and drowned the Egyptian soldiers. God provided for his people in the wilderness. Moses leads them to the Mount of God, Mount Sinai. God gives them his commandments. God gives them his uh, covenant for the people, right? What a beautiful experience. And the story goes on, and, and they come. To the land of Canaan. They come to where God has led them. This is, this is God's blessing, right? This is for my people. God, God who had led them out of Egypt. God who had led them over the Red Sea. God who had provided for them in the wilderness. He brings them to the very brink of inheriting the land that he had promised them. And so Moses sends 12 spies into the land to check it out. Go check it out. What are we dealing with, right? What are we dealing with? And in the text we read in verse 25 of Numbers 13, they returned from spy out the land after 40 days. So they went in there for 40 days, checked everything out, took notes. And came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation. They brought back samples of the produce of the land. In verse 27, He says, oh, you got to know this. We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Look how big this fruit is. Because, obviously, the soil is so fertile that what it produces this really amazing fruit. And this is an expression. It's a land that flows with milk and honey. That's just an expression. Milk is a basic staple of life, right? Especially for babies. But then after that, milk continues to be that. So, and honey is just something that's sweet, that, you know, that's just, that's the dessert kind of thing, right? That's a sweet, you know, what you need and what you enjoy, right? What you need and then the dessert part, you know? So what, what, what does it mean? It's only a form of milk and honey. It has all the substance that we need. It is bountiful in abundance of, with good things, the basic necessities and more. The necessities and even it's abounding with that which we would call dessert. There were 12 spies, but the 10 speak first. Verse 28, this is such a crucial word, verse 28. Nevertheless, everything's great. God, you know, God has brought us here, and my, what a, what a prosperous, what a bountiful place that God has led us to. Nevertheless, that's all true. The people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. And to add to it, we saw the descendants of Anak there. They were giants. 
think of Goliath and so forth, who would come later, is believed perhaps to be one of their descendants. So basically, the word's not here, but they're saying, we're just not sure about this. I mean, yeah, we like it. But it's really, it's really seems impossible because they're strong. And I mean, they're all strong. Look at the giants on top of that. Some of them are even giants. So we're not very optimistic. In fact, we just don't think it's possible. And Caleb and Joshua, and Caleb speaks, verse 30, Caleb inquired the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. What? Did you go to the same place? Yes. Did you see the same people? Yes. It continues. The other ten. The men who had gone up with them said, We are not able. Notice this. We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. We are not able. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report. The land through which we have gone as spies is the land that devours its inhabitants. Not all of them. What is he saying? If anybody new comes in, they don't have a chance. The land devours them. This is a land that's filled with giants and tall, you know, really strong people. Anybody else tries to live there, they will be devoured. And all the people whom we saw in our man of great stature. And they go on, they add again about the giant. There, and this is the title of the message. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came to the giants, and here's what they said. And we, this is how we felt about it. I mean, they're giants. And we were like grasshoppers in size. We were like tiny bugs. Not bugs. Excuse me, insects. We were like grasshoppers compared to them. That's how we looked at it, and that's how they looked at it, too. They, what did they say? They basically ignored us. They weren't alarmed. They weren't concerned. We were nothing to them. Because they, we viewed ourselves like grasshoppers in size, and they also felt the same way. What did this do to the congregation? They all were missing. The congregation believed the report of the ten against the two, right? They believed the report of the ten, and they said, and they began to cry, and they said, why did God bring us out here? We should have died in Egypt or in the wilderness because all hope is gone. We can't possibly move into the land. And now we're stuck. We saw the giants. What does that mean? 
our focus was on the giants. In this picture, who did they see? In this scenario, who did they see? They saw the giants. The ten with the negative report. All they could see, their perception was the giants. They were overwhelmed with their focus of the giants. Who did Caleb and Joshua see? Did they go to the second place? Yeah. Did they see in a sense that there were giants? Yes, but they didn't focus on the giants. In the picture of their mind, they weren't seeing the giants, they saw God. The God who had brought them out of Egypt, the God who had delivered them uh, to this point, that brought them across the Red Sea, the God of miracles, the God of wonders, uh, the God of creation, uh, the almighty, uh, all-powerful God, the all-knowing God, the all-present God, uh, they saw God and God's promise to give the land to them. That's why Joshua said, we are well able To overcome. Joshua and Caleb saw God. There we saw the giants. The other ten. All they could see was the giants. We all Come face to face with giants in our in our life, right? Amen. Another story, you know, that I kind of alluded to. There was a moment in his life that David came face to face with a giant, Goliath. Goliath had embarrassed the army of Israel. It was common practice in those days. The two armies would meet. I mean, they didn't always do this, but, but the, often they would they would say, you know, there's no point in all of us being slaughtered. So why don't we select one man from each of the armies to do combat? Whoever the winner is wins the battle and the victory, and we'll all accept it. So the Philistines sent out their champion, Goliath, the giant. And none of the Israelites wanted to challenge him, right? Because he was a giant. And then David, a very you know, a young man, he comes on the scene. You know the whole story. I want to do the whole story. He didn't see. He knew there was a giant, but he didn't see the giant. He saw God. Amen. And he knew he was empowered and sent by God. And he said, I'm coming to you in the name Jesus. of God. Right? In the name of the Lord. So he didn't see himself. He didn't, he didn't look at the armies of Israel. He didn't look at himself and his own abilities. He saw God. He was not discouraged by the giant Goliath who was not overwhelmed because he knew that God was greater. Amen. Everyone is giants spiritually that we cut in Calvary, right? And the key is who do we see? In your life, right? All of us, and this is me too, as we, as we go through life and we deal with problems and we deal with difficulties and, and, and we deal with situations and we, we deal with the powers of darkness. In our minds, certainly Satan and those with him are giants compared to us. If we just look at ourselves. The Israelites... The ten 
spies that brought the negative report. They saw the giants, and then they saw how they compared to the giants. When you're facing the struggles of life, the difficulties, when you come face to face with spiritual giants in your life, who do you see? Do we focus on ourselves and realize our inadequacies and realize our frailties and our inabilities? Do we come to the conclusion, I can't deal with this? Or do we see God? Who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask of Him according to the power that works in us? Amen. Do we see ourselves like grasshoppers in comparison to the spiritual giants that we face? Do they see us the same way? Romans chapter 8, verse 36 and 37, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Our enemies think of us as sheep. Yet in all these things, verse 37, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. How do we see ourselves? As sheep, as grasshoppers, or do we see God who gives us power? Do we see ourselves as more than conquerors, more than victorious, not in our own abilities, but through him who empowers us, through him who anoints us, through him who gives us the victory? First John chapter 4, verse 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. What did Caleb say? Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. Right? We are overcomers. You are of God, little children, First John 4, verse 4, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Amen. Praise God. First John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. For whatever is born of God, and we are the children of God, Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Amen. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Yes. Amen. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. We overcome. We're overcomers. How do we see the picture? How do we see the situation? What is our perception, right, of what we're going through, what we're dealing with? Is it impossible or is it just a challenge, right? Is it impossible or is it just something that's difficult that God is going to bring us through, amen? There we saw the giants. Who do you see, right? Who do you see? Do you see the spiritual giants that you're facing? Is that your entire focus? How hard? How difficult it is. Do you see your own inadequacies and inabilities to cope and to deal with whatever situation that, that you're uh, up against? Or do you see God? Amen. Who is able to do all things. Amen. Who do we see? There we saw the giant. So to be clear, we have to be aware of the giants. We have to have an understanding of how powerful they are. 
and how in ourself we can't possibly deal or cope. But overshadowing that, in the forefront of the picture, overwhelming everything else in the background, we see God. Amen. Oh Lord, you are able to do all things. Lord, there is nothing too hard for you. Lord, there's nothing beyond your capability. Thank you, Jesus. We lift your hand and give him praise. What do you see this morning? Who we see makes all the difference. Amen. Between optimism and pes pessimism, between feeling defeated and overcome and overwhelmed, depressed and discouraged, or feeling optimistic and hopeful and victorious. Amen? Amen. And having joy, right? And peace. Who do we see? We realistically look at life and we, we see challenges. We see things that we're going to have to overcome. We see spiritual giants. We recognize that. But as I said, I'll repeat it again. In that picture that we have in our mind, in our heart, those things need to be in the background in the foreground, taking all of our attention, we should see God. Amen. God, you can deal with it. Yes, you can. Thank you, Lord God. You can deal with it. I am able to overcome. Amen. I am well able to overcome. Yes. Hallelujah. More than conquerors. Will you stand with me this morning? I am well able to overcome. Yes. Because I see Jesus. I see the power of God. I see God moving. Amen. 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 We give the Lord praise. Lord, we praise you this morning. Lord, we praise you today. Lord, we glorify you. Hallelujah. 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 We are well able, Lord, to move forward in victory. We're well able, Lord, to move forward triumphantly because we are overcomers through Jesus Christ. We see you, Lord, in the forefront, overshadowing everything. We see you, Lord. We see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for victory. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Thank you for deliverance and help. Thank you for supplying our needs, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for, for wisdom and direction. Thank you, Lord, that we're moving forward in faith, in the power of your name, through your spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Knees to the Lord this morning. Let's pray for Dan this morning. I will be with us. Linda told us that he moved, helped them move the refrigerator this week. Probably not the best idea. Went to the hospital last night because he was feeling pretty bad, and of course the doctor's office wouldn't be open at that time, so they went to the emergency. 
and check him out. And I sent the information to you, and he has some pull muscles and things like that. And uh, I don't know if he's still in the hospital or been released at this point, but this is pray that God would give him healing right away. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else have any of you want to share today? Yeah, Stephanie. I have a see what I should be. Great granddaughter, I just it's it's my daughter in law's daughter. She she's pregnant with with a Who's this? Kurt's wife. No, well Okay. Kurt's wife, she's not pregnant. Yeah, right. Her granddaughter. Her daughter, okay. Is that pregnant with uh, uh, identical twins. Oh. And they have water on their brain. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing, there's something that's missing in their brains that uh, will affect their hearing and their uh, eyes. Mm. So I, I'm thinking prayer. Amen. Amen. Because otherwise they won't be able to hear or see. Mm. And we believe God's able to heal, right? Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. All right. Anybody else? You had your hand up. One of you. Bless us and anoint us. It's moving. Amen. And our prayer, and our prayer, our prayer meeting. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, let's pray that my prayer sessions will have an impact and effect, you know, God will honor that. I'm sure it will. So if you can join us, it'll be great. If you can't be here in person, as I said, 6 o'clock, offer a prayer. You can do that. and devices of the enemy. 